but I've never been slouch. And that's what you all know about me, man. I know sometimes y'all like to kick back, sip your coffee and your donuts and wait to do the show, but we got to do the show now. Give me those papers, man. Oh, me mom. Oh, hand me that stuff over there too, man. Oh my God, that I do. Somebody please sit. No, I need all of the, all of the papers, bro. All of the papers. Because Jay-Z done turned his back on Diddy. And it's sad. Grammy's crisis over seating plans. Stars refuse to sit near Diddy. After the sex claims of Cassie. They're making it seem like Cassie is a bigger star than Diddy because she's a woman and she allegedly got violated for years with a Gucci purse and a Louis Vuitton vest on. The Grammys is having a crisis. It's pandemonium. People calling up the Grammys, don't sit me next to that mother. I don't even want to be in the same room. If Diddy's going to be there, put me on the other side. Put him up in the balcony all by himself. If you have me sit next to Diddy, I'm not coming. Who's the main people that sit next to Diddy every year at the Grammys? It's only a handful of people that's even allowed to sit next to this man. Not to mention they be having pre Grammy lunches. They all get together and have some not not some snacks before they go sit together at the Grammys. So that means all of his peers turn their backs on him. Because these are the people that he's been seated with for the past 30 years. And they're telling the Grammys. Don't sit me next to him this year. It's a crisis. They don't know where to put or who's sitting with who or who get along or what click with the bad boy click. Suge Knight doing podcasts. They not trying to have a source award situation by sitting the wrong people with the wrong people, man. Diddy's click consists of Jay-Z, Beyonce, a splash of Kanye West and whoever else is hot at the time. So all of the hot, hot rappers or hot big moguls that's in his lane, don't even want to sit next to this man. But people don't even understand the history. It gets really, really deep. Back in the day, Jay-Z was rocking with Big Daddy Kane, a old school legend in hip hop that used to rock the parties from the east to the west. Big Daddy. That's how deep his ties go back in the music industry. He been on the scene for a long time, but so was Diddy. The overweight lover in the house. This was Diddy's man's in the eighties. Big Daddy Kane and Heavy D always did shows together. Always rocked the party, rock the mic together. And Big Daddy Kane had Jay-Z with him and his entourage. Jigga was rocking with Kane and Jazzo. And Diddy was rocking with the overweight man. The Biggie before Biggie. The inspiration for Biggie. Do y'all understand? That these men been linked up and tied together before each of them even became famous. I'm talking about Jay-Z and Diddy. I gotta see this, man. Jigga man don't turn his back on his boy. You got a picture of Heavy D, Big Daddy Kane, and the boys, Big Biz Marquee, back when they was running the game. When they was the stars of the show, they had people like Nas and Jay-Z and Diddy and their entourages. When they was going to their award shows and doing big things, they had Jay-Z and Diddy and Jermaine Dupri and all them dudes that became moguls. 
used to be under these dudes hips and now they don't rose to the top those rappers are has-beens and everybody forgot about them and at the same time in the midst of all of this there's a crisis y'all gotta understand this there's a crisis overseeding who don't want to sit next to diddy who did it is it dj Khaled? Cause that's supposed to be his man's is it fat joe that don't want to sit next to him or is it jay-z or who else has ever been allowed to sit next to this man the grammy seating plan has been plunged into chaos by claims made against rapper sean diddy combs organizers normally only have to worry about the egos of the stars in the room but we can reveal that in the wake of the in sexual abuse allegations against the hip hop star, a number of celebrity agents have asked for their clients to be seated away from him. The agents is making moves. They can't have their clientele sitting next to Diddy, even if they want to. He's been blackballed. And when somebody got the black ball, you do not want to sit in his court. You don't want to get black ball. You got to get along, a play along to get along. His squad, his boys, his homies, they out the door. This week, Comb settled a lawsuit with his ex-girlfriend, Cassie, who accused him of abusing her for more than a decade. And on Friday, two more women filed civil cases against the star, accusing him of scrape, sexual assault. You know, R. Kelly went through the same thing, and he was also besties with the Jigga Man. They did albums together, they party, did tours, concerts, he was rocking with Kells until them allegations came out about misconduct with the ladies. Now your boy Diddy, the king of the city, everybody's idol. People look up to him, admire him. They give him so much credit. Listen to Jay-Z talk about how he feel about Diddy. Listen at this, y'all. The whole mantra, can't stop, won't stop, is like, you gotta be relentless. You gotta have a bit of crazy. You can't take no for an answer. You gotta make it happen. He embodies that. Here's this guy from a neighborhood similar to where I grown up that made it to these unreachable heights. Puff was the first one that came through and made us feel like, you know, it was us. It was ghetto fabulous. We took our rightful place at the tables and the boardrooms and the fashion shows and you know, we arrived. That impact obviously had an effect on all of us and let us carve our own space. And it was like, oh, we, we could be in these spaces without assimilating. We're gonna be in these spaces as ourselves. To change someone's mindset and take the limits off of kids' dreams. You dream about things, when you see it's done, then you know that dream becomes attainable. Then it's something that you can reach for. It just feels like the ultimate coach. Culture, you can't measure that. Like you get in there and he'll make you believe that you can do anything. All that love, all that admiration, all that praise. Jay-Z said Diddy was the man that opened the doors for black entrepreneurs to be onto entrepreneurs and being themselves at the same time. Fashion shows, every move Diddy made, Jigga made. He made Sean John, Jay-Z came out with rock aware. He had Biggie, Jay-Z had Beanie Siegel. He admired this man, followed his moves, looked up to him, give him his credit, his props, his praises, his roses. But somebody don't want to sit next to Diddy at the Grammys this year. They don't want to be there with him. After all that good stuff Jay-Z said about this man, him paving the way and they stripping all of that away from this man. When it's all said and done, 
all of his accolades, all of the the record breaking he done did is gone down the drain with some wet wipes and some sticky toilet paper. Bill Cosby was one of the greatest black men to ever walk the face of the earth when he was on top. Mr. Bill Cosby was America's dad. Bill Cosby was America's darling and he could do no wrong, man. Everybody loved good old Bill. He was America's uncle, America's father, America's teacher. Amer He's a, he was a good old American hero, man. That all stopped over some pooty tang, sexual, elegant, black men. If you got a sexuality, boy, you's a criminal. Bill Cosby had a sexual appetite and he got dismissed for using his wiener. He never thought his sexuality would get him in trouble. Like hell, we all have sex, don't we? No, 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 Bill. Not in America, you don't. Had the finest chick in Hollywood on his arm. And they locked him up over some. These brothers just can't win. It, all the shit he done accomplished, he done paved the way HBCUs. He done did amazing things in his career. He been old forever. One of the wisest brothers out. Mr. Sir Bill Cosby. They turned him into a doodoo stick. Better yet, a fudge creamsicle or whatever. They turned this man into a meme. Tarnished everything he ever worked for. Reduced him to a sexual predator. That's how they do it, man. That's the easiest way to get a brother out your way. Make him a deviant. You know what I'm saying? It's really that simple. Did he been sexual, freaky, kinky his whole career? And now that they done with him and they ready to dispose of him, they turned him into a sexual deviant. Like he ain't been smacking asses and getting cheeks. Like he ain't been roughing them boys up in the shower. You like it when I do it like that, daddy. You like that, don't you, daddy? We all know how Diddy get down. We got videos of him saying all types of wild shit. It was all good just a week ago. Whenever you say something about Diddy before all of this Cassie shit, People would be like, that nigga nasty. I heard Diddy a freak. Yeah, Diddy, he like men and women. I think he's zesty. Diddy always trying to get it in with somebody. He wanted Fab to come do a three-way with him and Jada kiss that. He a wild boy. People been talking about his freaky ass for years. But now, since Cassie, oh, he, he did this, he did that, and I, I want the money. People acting like they give a damn about Cassie all of a sudden. People didn't give a damn about Cassie when she was making that music and nobody wanted to buy it. You know what I'm saying? Now, they saying that Jay-Z done turned his back on his boy? You figure... In hip hop, it's only two people that's really sitting on top of the game. That's Jay Z, and you can't leave Puff out of the conversation. And it will be hurtful if Jay Z is delighted by the fact that Puff is falling off. That makes him the undisputed heavyweight king of the hip hop world. He watching Diddy fall like George Foreman in the Ali fight. He like one, 
two, three, he's down. And you know, they only got one other person to go to to give all of Diddy's hand-me-downs to. Like, oh, fuck, Puff. Let's let's get on the Jay-Z bandwagon. I bet we could throw him some money. Oh, he's, he's bulletproof. He's with Beyonce. He can sell a liquor bottle faster than Puff could even blink. You know, we're going to take our business to Sean Combs. Or Sean Carter instead of Sean Combs. Man, they, they about to give all of Diddy's cookies to Jay-Z, man. They about to give him all of the endorsements. You name it. Jay-Z is the only clean brother in the entertainment business. They, like I said, they got Bill Cosby. They got dirt on everybody. Diddy, he's dirty now. And Jay-Z is still squeaking clean. And somebody, I mean, somebody don't want to sit next to Diddy at the Grammys. It's a crisis. It's a, and they don't even know if they're going to have the Grammys because if, if Diddy there, they're going to scatter like roaches, man. That's how bad it is. Yo, we've been rocking this for a good little These minute. We got people in the building leaving comments and what would I be doing if I wasn't showing y'all no love? Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold Wow, the whole family is in the building. I'm talking about Sandy Gee, Last Sam, and Diana Duncan. The Chosen Eleven is here. Cena Freeman, Milia, 12. Man, I can't even believe that. All of y'all showed up at the same damn time. We got Glitty Glam and Grace. Do y'all see that? That's really, y'all don't know who Grace is? Y'all need to watch Boomerang. We got seven and one son is here as well. Solomon, Slevin, Christopher, and this dude right here is in the building, man. Nugga Cosmacus is here, man. QS also showed up with Yeah, yo, Yashua. We in the building, man. All of y'all, man. So much love for the people leaving them comments. But without further ado, we got to get into some heavy investigations. Man. Because people don't understand how deep the relationship between these two men really go. It goes really, really deep. Jay-Z. Been admiring. Everything Puff got going on. He was a fan before Puff even became famous. Back when Puff was running with Andre Harrell at Uptown Records. Jay-Z wanted to get on that man's level. He always had his eye on Puff. And ain't nothing wrong with that. It gave him a, a navigation to get to where he trying to get. He was a rapper, but he wanted to be a businessman. And Diddy was more of a businessman than a rapper. So he wanted to be more like Diddy while spitting his 16s, man. So... The relationship between him and Jazzo, they were some good brothers, man. They was riggedy rappers that was spitting bars in the streets of Brooklyn. And they got involved with some big time people. Thanks to Jazzo. He took Jay-Z along for the ride. And the whole time, Jay-Z was soaking up the game like a sponge. And that's what young dudes supposed to do when you rolling with some OGs. Jigga didn't have no friends his age. He rocked with the older dudes because in his mind, he was an old man anyway, man. The only thing is he was smarter than them niggas he was around. And he, they made the mistakes for him so he didn't have to make it. He basically climbed the ladder off of these dudes because they was older and he was younger. And they didn't realize that hip hop, hip hop got a timestamp on it. Once you reach a certain age, you done. If you don't switch it up. Uh, a lot of these rappers never switched it up because of their egos. They trying to keep it street, trying to keep it whatever it was when they was hot. 
Jigga went through the school of hip hop. He was learning early on what to do and what not to do and why I wouldn't do this and I would do that. And Puff was going through the same thing. And the reason why I'm trying to bring this to y'all attention is because they got a crisis going on. All of his peers. You think Puff let anybody sit next to him? I'm pretty sure for years he was calling the shots on who's sitting where. Like me and my boys got to we got to be together. Y'all need to see this, man. Rock boys in the building tonight. Oh, how I'm chilling. I'm killing this ice. The Rock Boys is in the bit. Jay-Z, Nas, and Diddy, the kings of the city. They post up together. That's the only people they want to be around. If you see me next to somebody or seated next to somebody, it better be Puffy. If I'm coming to the party, I'm sitting with Diddy. It been that way for years. Popping champagne, Chris Style, the Ace of Spade, the the life of the motherfucking party. If you ain't with them boys right there, you ain't doing nothing. That's the dream team, the hip hop supreme team, man. This legacy and hip hop and what it stands for. The gritty, non-commercial, non-pop, that hardcore, that street shit. Man, it don't get no better. We talking about the dude that put out Biggie Smalls, went to war with Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight, East Coast, West Coast beef, held it down at the Source Awards. Did it for the, for the grind, the gritty, Craig Mack, Biggie Smalls, the locks. Producer for Mary J. Blige, the queen of hip hop R&B. Talking about Diddy, the king of the city. They trying to tear him down. Like he ain't been bossed up for. Come on, man. He's a legend. And don't even let me get started on Nas. Resurrected New York. Put the whole state on his back, represent for Queens, spitting bars. Even Tupac was hating. Pac wanted that smoke with Nas because he knew that if he go at somebody like that, that's going to be a buzz. Nas was the chosen one. New York rap was facing a crisis because everybody was trying to sound like the West Coast. It was getting corny. Jay-Z said too much West Coast dick licking. And Nas started spitting that spit with old rugged beats. Basement beats. He took it back to the source, the element, when people were starting to get lost in the game. Man. That we talking about Nasir Jones, man. And man, you gotta save the best. But last, Jay Z is the greatest rhymer to ever spit bars in hip hop. Period. Eminem is a hell of a lyricist, but the shit he was talking about really had no substance. Jay Z, lyrically, Come on, man. And on top of that, he's a business. He's business savvy. A business minded. He don't worked his way into a billion dollars. And also created some of the most legendary music ever. This is the supreme dream team, man. So whenever they go places. They want to be seated around each other. That's who they want to keep in a circle, man. 
the money is there. The respect is there. The, the game is there. They on the same level with each other, but you can argue that Diddy, regardless of what they got going on, Diddy is always going to be on a higher level than them because they mimicked what they seen Diddy do. He going to be their big brother forever. And you mean to tell me they don't want to sit next to big bro? How dare they? When this the man where y'all got all y'all swag from. He the one that hit you with the fly clothes. The Wu-Tang, they was dirty. Wu-Tang is, you know, classical as they is. They was dusty. And people will want to fight you for saying something like that. But the truth is the truth, man. M-E-T. What was it? M-E-D-H-O-D. It was stupid. He was on the bus. Where that video? To cat? Where that shit at? They had fangs in their mouth. Sagging. Shitty draws. Look like they about to rob a liquor store, man. They didn't have no class. No elegance, no nothing. It was like some horrorcore rappers. Look at this shit. You didn't have to take a bath to go to a Method Man concert. He wants you in there funky. Like, bring your stinking ass in here and let's party. To cow. He looked like he ain't shaved. He retarded. He possessed. He's smoking weed all day. Just a, a weed head. To cow. That's what niggas was doing before Diddy made people wash their ass and put on some cologne and be fresh to death. You could be fat, black, and ugly. However, stay Gucci down to the socks. Them sound like some niggas that take baths. Bubble bath and jacuzzi, extra sofa, my booty. And the jacuzzi got extra sofa, our booties. Ugh. Rapping by washing their ass. Diddy made people do something with they self, man. Seriously. do oh, y'all. Hip hop would have been one dirty, dusty, funky place if it wasn't for Diddy coming on the scene, man. He made you want to dress nice. Get some money so you could look like something. Like, hold up, mama. I don't want to wear overalls. I want to look like a boss. He made you wear a rollie like a businessman. The jewelry. He always represent Jesus. He keep the Jesus piece with him. He got the Lord by his side while he making millions. He inspired a lot of people to do the right thing. Because if it was up to them other rappers, them MOPs and all them, the foo schnickens, and the, them, it'd be a bunch of crackheads out here. Diddy saved the whole generation from smoking crack. Because one thing we knew for sure, Diddy wasn't smoking no dope. What's them dudes' names? The foo schnickens. It was some good. Look, I put in the Fu Snickers. They put in the Kung Fu Chicken. What the fuck? That shit look good. Next time I go to the Chinese restaurant, I'm going to ask for some Fu Snickers. We got that for you. Hold on, y'all. And no disrespect. But look at this, man. These dudes. Look how dirty they was back in the day, man. Like, my name's Jamal. My name's Jamal. Like, right, what's your name, bro? My name's Jamal. Three brothers named Jamal. They come out of the sewer and kick it on the stairway, man. Hold on. They don't even look like they even know each other like that. Wait a fucking minute. What the hell is he doing there? They too brown skinned to be hanging with him. 
Like, I roll with light skin niggas. That's what I do, man. You know, I'm, I, I'm dark nigga with the light niggas, man. This some shit Hollywood put together. They not even from the same state. He from like Iowa. This motherfucker from Ohio. And he from Nebraska. What, what the shit? The Foosh Nickens. They made an album called Breakdown. And this motherfucker, he losing. He don't smoke that PCP. They don't laced his blunt and he don't lost his motherfucking mind. The Foosh Nickens. Look at their logo. That's some shit they came up with in elementary school. Watching all them karate movies and corny shit. They be rapping like they be comics and, and whatnot. It was a lot of boyish bullshit out here before Diddy came on the scene. And then everybody like, oh shit, it's time to get fly, time to get money. What the fuck what y'all talking about? People got sick of hearing them Chinese raps. Diddy saved the day. Hold on. And Biggie was on that dirty boy stuff before he got with Biggie. Before he got with Diddy. Hold on. Biggie before. Because he was running with Tupac with the thugs or whatever. He didn't get fly until Diddy put him on. He was out here with the hoodie, with the. That shit looked ridiculous. If he went to Walmart like that, security would have asked him to step outside and order that shit online. This how men was looking out there ridiculous like hoodlums before Diddy came along, man. He put a stop to the madness and took Biggie out them slums. Look at his niggas. Look at his face. Who gonna let him come to their party? He got a oop in his hand. This shit is not professional. They looking like they begging for a body. He got with Puff. Puff made him take all that shit like Playboy. Don't go out there dressed up like that no more. Put on some slacks and wear a leather jacket. We get money over here. Ain't got time to be dusty. We got no time for fake ones. Now just sip some crystal with these real ones. From east to west coast, spread love, son. And while y'all keep talking shit, we got bank funds. Look at Biggie. He got a nice button up Versace. Versace for my body. He looking all silky. He got a cane. Diddy Dong gave him some decent shades. Gave him a, a chain with a Jesus piece. Doing it for the Lord. Like, put God first, man. That's what Puff always say, man. Put God first. Get this money and ball out. I don't know about them dusty hoodies, no boy. Only Gucci's and Valuis. Versace sweaters. Buffy. With his expensive taste. Put some class and elegance in the game. Make a brother button that ass butt, boy. If you don't button up, we about making some money. Y'all out here selling dime bags. What the fuck? Button your ass up, nigga. He turned that hoodlum into a young gentleman. Even bought his mama a house. Juicy. Even made Lil' Kim put on some decent clothes and got her a decent wig. This man is a freaking saint and they trying to tarnish all that he done built up because he was freaking off with Cassie and she was loving it. It's either Biggie Smalls is related to R. Kelly's ex-wife or Biggie and Mace is the same 
person, man. Is Mace Biggie's little brother or something? Because they got the same everything. Wait a minute. What if Mace is really Biggie that lost weight? Hold on. Shit is crazy. Why Biggie look like Mace? He got the same head, the same smile, the same eyebrows. Yo, this shit is crazy. They got the same hammer fish head. Is it a hammer fish? I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> I'm gonna have to Google that shit, man. I think it is. Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all stay tuned. Hammer fish. No, I'm talking about the, is it a puffer fish? The puffer fish with the fat head. Hold on. The puffer, puffer fish. That, nah, he got a fat face, a fat everything. What's the fish with the big head? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna put in big head fish. Put that muff. He got a lump head. I don't know what he called. He look. Is that the nigga? That's the nigga. That's the fish. The lump head. What? What he called? The big head. That's that mace. Look. Look. Mace got that same head. Is he related to Biggie or is he related to this fit? There it go. Look, they got the same teeth, the same lips. Y'all see the lips. They might be twins. What's the name? <laughs> What's the name of this fish, man? They said he a transgender fish. What the fuck? Hold up. They got Joanna man fish. He like, how you doing? He the shenane of the ocean. The fuck? A trans fit changing. Like what it do? This fish a, a Nicki Minaj fan. He got the pink hair and everything. He got the man jaw with some pretty. Look at this. Look how masculine his jaw is. This fish got a Jay Leno chin. Talk about he about that trans life. What the hell is going on in the universe, man? But that's Negro here no there. Either way, it do look like Mace. And Biggie, man. In the hell they get them heads. He ain't got a hairline. He had a bar line. Bit. Like what y'all talking about me? Why y'all talking about me? That fish gonna come through your screen. Now, you ain't gonna cook me, bitch. I'm gonna cook you. Oh, diva ass fish. He in the ocean confused like a motherfucker. Like, who said that? Who what? What? He talking shit to a school of fish and they minding their own business. Y'all need to get the fuck out of my face. Fuck you and your kids. <laughs> a zesty ass fish. Oh, God made him fabulous, hunty. God made him fabulous. And look at you. Them zesty fish of the ocean, man. He be catching the other fish looking at him like, mm hmm. Like I seen you looking at that zesty fish. That took a pretty man. Oh, he already prepared. Like, I know what you want. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to talk about this man's head. That's how we even got here, man. 
If it wasn't for him looking like that, we wouldn't even be talking about these zesty fish of the ocean, man. So don't look at me crazy. Look at him crazy. Oh my God, man. This. Oh. Anyway, this album, people was feeling it. But I think the only reason why people was feeling this album was because it was the thing to do at the time. <clears throat> it's what was trending. He was a LL Cool J slash gangsta slash pretty boy Harlem shit. Take your girl, Harlem world. People hated him to death. Just like most people hate people from Harlem. Look, I'm just a messenger, man. Like, let's be real. Have you ever met somebody from Harlem? Have you ever like, you know, been in the same situation or had to work with somebody from Harlem? Have you ever experienced it? The condescending behavior you can only get from a person from Harlem. I'm from Harlem, man. I'm from Harlem. I'm from Harlem. Man, look where I'm from. My block. My block. Yeah, it's a historical, historical, historical neighborhood. We understand, but damn, that don't make you better than every damn body. Do y'all feel me? Like, who will not want to be from Harlem, man? Right across the street. That's the first place Malcolm X ever spoke to Dr. King. I'm from Harlem, off of my grandmother, my grandfather. We we always had money. Niggas always get money. We shine been shining since the 60s, man. We always get money, Harlem. And you come down to Harlem. They even got songs back in the day. Right around 105th Street. Niggas been singing about Harlem since forever. It's draining. That's all I'm trying to say, man. And this man made Harlem world like forget everybody. It's all about Harlem. The whole world is just is just Harlem, Harlem world. It ain't got nothing to do with your city. Oh, where are you from? Nebraska? Oh, fuck Nebraska. I'm from Harlem. Well, oh, where are you from? Cali? Oh, that's cool. But oh, we, we from Harlem. Where you from? You said you from Iowa, Iowa. Well, nigga, I'm from Harlem, Harlem world, man. Where you from, China? That's cool and all that. You from Shanghai, but guess what, nigga? Nigga, I'm from Harlem. We had to put up with it. Nobody liked it. It was Diddy's plan. He from Harlem. He wanted Mace to be the man. We get it. And Biggie was the man in Brooklyn. But you know, Brooklyn. It's famous for all the wrong reasons, man. Brooklyn is a shady part of the town. It got a reputation for being grimy. Maybe the grimiest borough. Where super grimy shit happens. And it rings bells throughout all of the five boroughs. Like Brooklyn is wildin'. If you want to get robbed, go to Brooklyn. You want somebody to knock you upside your head and take your sneakers? Hang around in Brooklyn. Shooting off of the roof. You walking down the street, pop, 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 pop. Where are them gunshots coming from? It's kids on the roof shooting. I've seen it. I've seen the freaking the project buildings that night where the damn um the sheets be blowing in and out the windows, dope fiends sleeping on the benches. If you ain't never been, you ain't never gotta go. Brooklyn. I mean it's a lot different now, but back in the day, I mean, damn. It was a whole nother world, man. But I say all that to say, Diddy has been able to merge stars from different boroughs. He was even going after Nas, but Nas didn't, his contract was all fucked up. He had to do what he had to do. 
And plus, he was one of them lyrical dudes that wasn't on the business tip. Diddy was on the business tip. Nas was on the lyrical, doing it for my city, put it on for Queens, Queensbridge, man. An artist. And it's a big difference between artists and lyricists. But Jay-Z, well, artists and businessmen, but Jay-Z just so happened to be both. And I'm pretty sure when Jay-Z met Puff, Puff was feeling Jigga swag a whole lot more than he was feeling Biggie at the time. He saw the potential in Jay-Z and his focus and where his head was at because he didn't have to groom Jay-Z like how he had to groom Biggie. Jay-Z already knew what time it was. He was already on Diddy's wavelength. He wanted everything Diddy got and more. And Diddy peeped that. And that's how their relationship blossomed. And I'm sure the conversations between Diddy and Puff was like, Biggie cool, but he just don't get it. He want to smoke weed with his niggas all day. I put him in position to be a boss, but he's still running with them junior mafia niggas, man. Like who will, how you gonna get rich and you associate yourself with goonies? Biggie was still out there with the goon squad, making himself a bigger target. And Diddy was sick of it. He like, hell, if I do business with Jay-Z, we can get a lot further because this guy right here is going to run me into a brick wall. Got problems out in the street. This nigga Pac running his mouth in a damn studio booth. Talking mad shit on a mic. But when you see him in person, it's like 38 Bloods and Suge Knight got pit bull dogs and all this. <laughs> it ain't like you ever going to be able to touch this nigga. And they wanted to get him, man. I'm pretty sure Puff would have loved to see Tupac walking down the dark alley three in the morning by himself. Right, let me talk to you, Playboy. Well, get in the car, man. Get in the car, Pac. Get your ass in the car, Pac. He probably would have did Pac dirty if <laughs> if he caught him by himself, man. And he had every right to do it. But Pac probably would have ran. And rest in peace to Pac. But what I'm trying to say to y'all is all this great history, all this this legendary shit. They still don't want to sit next to this man at the Grammys. It's a crisis. It's pandemonium. Cassie started a shit storm for this man. And that was the only way they could really get the ball rolling with canceling this man. Now he going to have to buckle. It's only a few things Diddy can do right now. And he been working on it for years with this brother love bullshit. Is become a pastor evangelist. He needs a gospel and he need a fast like Reverend Run. Hold on, y'all. <clears throat> Man, before Reverend Run became Rev Run, he was facing some shit. He accumulated his big ass family. Hip hop stars only stay hot for so long. And when his ship started to sink and people wasn't rocking with the run and that shit was played out. And it was almost all over. He called up Russ to borrow some money. Mom, man, you got to do something, man. I'm not going to be paying you. His brother scolding him. The records ain't selling no more. That family just keep getting bigger. 
And this daughter, she kept, she keep getting thicker and thicker and eating up all the food, man. Eventually, this man had to find himself a gospel. Something to hold on to that America would appreciate him for and respect him for. He had to find some respect in the game because rappers, when it's all said and done, never get any respect for saying yeah, yeah, yo on the mic. They not going to hold you down forever. Because you're a rapper, you get just, when you get older. You become a joke. Oh, you used to be a rapper. Oh, that's how you got your money. Oh, rapping. Okay, yo, yo, yo. You go to the country clubs or whatever. You don't moved up in society. All your peers looking at you like a joke. Like, hey, spit a rap. That's what you do. It did do a song. Like, yo, 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 man. That got to piss you the fuck off. So he decided to hop under the priest umbrella. He don't get no more respectable than that. He still got a diddy bop. He got the hat. He ain't letting that shit go, but he will put that around his neck so you could put some respect on his motherfucking name. Whose house? The Lord's house. Like, if you talk bad about me, you talk bad about God. It's, it's really that simple. You know, you could talk bad about me. You could talk about the way I look. You could say I fell off. You could say run DMC. It's corny. You could do all that. But one thing you're not going to do is disrespect the Lord. And since I am a man of the cloth, if you talk bad about me in any type of way, you know, that's blasphemous. Because that's like talking bad about God. Yeah, yeah, I done some things in hip hop. You know, I started the, the rap genre that got niggas killing each other out here, but that wasn't my intent. And plus, I'm a reverend now, so so please get off my sack. Like, Lord, it's hot as hell in this motherfucker. He had that shit on for three days straight. They finally caught him when he freaked out. Let me get this shit off me. They had to do an exorcism before they put that shit on them. He holding the cane like it's his penis. Like, you suck this, man. Shit, take this shit off. Like, I don't want to be a pastor no more. Ah, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a pastor. Ah, ah. They had to put the straight jacket on them. <laughs> like, fuck you, man. Fuck. I'm tired of shit, man. Ah. He gave up on the Lord. <laughs> they had to talk him back into it, man. I'm a vampire, nigga. I'm a fuck that. I'd rather be a vampire than to be a man in a cloth. I got a cloth for you, a red and black cloth. Yeah, yeah, I'll bite people. Yeah. He lost his motherfucking mind, man. Like, yo, I'm down with the devil. I'm down with the, down with the Lord. I'm down with the king down with everything man you know you gotta have a split personality man he was losing his shit like yeah 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 i got your money i got your girl he run up out the church looking like a bat he done took your money took your wife now he headed to the mall <laughs> he headed to the mall just like that with your money in his back pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit is crazy, man. But anyway, how did we even? I do apologize, man. <laughs> how did we even get there? And it's all y'all fault, man. Y'all got to help me when I get off track. Y'all be sitting there watching this shit. Information man show was in the building. Peace and respect, my brother, man. Peace and respect to you too, dog. Um, Neo K Love. Seneca is in the building. What it do? Gage Gore, what's up? Sean Pimpin is still pimping. QS and 12. Ran rising in 20 twin twin. Lance Hero King Legend. Brentwood and OB Jr. Man, the whole fam is here tonight. I'm glad y'all kicking it with me. 
I'm pissed, man. I really can't believe. People in the music industry don't want to sit next to Diddy. What did he do to you? If you don't want to sit next to him, you shouldn't want to sit next to nobody. Because they all get down like that. They all got side bitches. They got mistresses. They paying rent for bitch. They tricking off. They doing it all. They freaking off. They, they doing it all. It ain't just Diddy. It's a whole bunch of people. They freaking, especially with them young artists, them old artists with the young artists. They know exactly how to get them. <clears throat> Shit, G Herbo show up to the Grammys. Do you, can you imagine how many eyes would be on G Herbo? They'll be looking like, is that Reverend Run's son? Or like, who the, f is, is he related to the Simmons? Like, my name G, G Herbo. Shit, one of Reverend Run's illegitimate children. Father Rev Run, but you know they set me up for adoption, so fuck him. If he went to the Grammys, some grimy dude from Chicago, I'm pretty sure they already done groomed this man. I wouldn't doubt if he already been groomed, man. You wonder who cars they be, they got sugar daddies and shit, allegedly, man. That be leasing in them cars and you could drive my car. These, they get in the rap game and find a sugar daddy. Let's keep it a buck, allegedly. Like Bobby Shmurda. You see Bobby Shmurda in a, a Lambo with some chains and his album ain't never went platinum. Who done wiped up? And no, this this all alleged, but I'm just saying, it's, it's make it make sense. They'll wife up one of these young rappers, give him all of the jewelry to stunt, and he be winding and dancing all in the videos like, yeah. I wear them niggas, y'all see me, ah! He be twerking more than his little sisters, man. He go winding, grinding like he in the dance hall somewhere. He got in the game because he did a booty dance. Threw his hat in the air and turned around and wiggled his booty. And that's when them people, them record execs started calling like, get him up here now. He in the bottom of the swimming pool doing push-ups because he got to do the unthinkable. They bringing Big Bertha to the house tonight. <clears throat> These niggas want me to do what? Oh, man. I got to train. Turn these rappers into sex slaves, man. But that's Negro here nor there. The point I'm trying to make is this. It's way more freaks in Hollywood than Diddy, man. It's more, it's more freaks in society. It's everyday people out here, straight freaky. Ain't no telling what they looking at on their phones. The elderly people in your family with a cell phone, it goes down. Nana ain't answering her phone. She in her room. She on that damn phone. Ain't no telling what she looking at. She looking at old pictures of Billy D. Williams and his Playboy covers and shit. It's some freak. It's too much access out here. You could be a freak however you want to do it. People weird. Dwight Howard. Is he going to be at the Grammys? Cause fuck what they talking about with Diddy. I'll sit right next to Diddy. As long as I'm not sitting next to Dwight Howard, man. They tripping. Because he was freaking off with Cassie. I'm pretty sure those people that don't want to sit next to him probably was freaking off with Cassie with him. I seen some crazy pictures, man. I got to share this with y'all real quick. I 
to see this. Yeah, yeah. This is beyond crazy. He the life of the party. <clears throat> the same people, like I said before, Nas, got Swiss Beats, Jay-Z, and uh, that's it. That's all he be sitting next to. He don't sit next to nobody else. So what is there that they got to rearrange? Got all the, that's his squad. Rick Ross, DJ Khaled. You mean to tell me Ross don't want to sit next to Diddy? Oh, I'm sorry, man. I ain't trying to get blackballed. Yo, Gotti don't want to sit next to Diddy. They have a brunch before they go to the Grammys. He been outcasted, delisted. He, Big Sean is out of there. They not even respecting. He's, he's chopped liver, man. He's gone. You ain't gonna be hearing from Big Sean no more. He not gonna be at the Grammys. You know, they take these younger artists and treat them like prostitutes because they don't respect their craft. And Jay will rather be the God MC before he really have somebody in his corner that know how to work a mic. Because if he did, he will be in fear that that rapper, that lyricist will overpass him one day or suppress him one day. He ain't got to worry about that with all these whack ass rappers they be signing. He got the game just the way he wanted. It ain't going to be no second coming. He going to be the God MC for all eternity because he got people like Big Sean a record deal. People like J. Cole is reigning supreme with their lyrical skills. Look at Kendrick Lamar is supposed to be the lyrical god of hip hop because he say his name Kendrick. Sad man. Um, Even the basketball players can't get away from this man. They sign in deals with Rock Nation. They got basketball players doing business with them. And what exactly is the business? When you sign an agency to manage your shit, you just want to be in a circle. That's all they really do for an athlete. To shake and move in the inner circles and the inner workings of the people that they're connected with. People like Jay-Z, Diddy, the big wigs. It's sort of like joining a fraternity. Like hell, I want to sign with your management team because you, all your people going to have to link with me and my people and we're going to have to be a big happy family. So I want to be in the mix. You got Usher in the mix with Diddy. You mean to tell me Usher? Don't want to sit next to Diddy at the Grammys. Is this that much of an implosion in their circle? Is it because they got freaky shit going on and they don't want to be called out next just because they sit next to Diddy? It's going to have people looking into their shit. Is that what it all all about? If they talking about what happened with you and Cassie, just imagine what they're going to say about me and Aaliyah. Like, I can't sit next to you and they digging up old bones. Are you fucking kidding me? The last thing I need in my career is for them to bring up one of my ex bitches. And Jay-Z got a few of them, man. What if Charlie Baltimore come out looking like Jasmine Guy with a whole bunch of Jay-Z stories? And she already did a little bit of talking, but they know when to shut the hell up when they send the giant Dutch at you and he throw your ass over a balcony. People get the message. One thing you're not going to do is go at Hove. It ain't going to happen. Because he's a nice guy, but you know, 
he got people around him that want to do you dirty. It's not even him. Jay-Z is a nice guy. But them people that he don't support it and the people that's loyal to him. rock a bye baby. They're going to put your ass to sleep. And it is not going to be tied to nothing that Jigga got going on. Because he got people that genuinely ride for this man. That's willing to put in some work. And it don't even have to be nothing physical. They'll assault you and assault you online, man. But to be hearing that nobody. I mean, nobody. It's a panda pandemonium a crisis no look at this shit y'all they look like the bestest of friends got a beautiful piece of property the wind is blowing the, the pine trees and shit it's so nice out. Look how they all out there, man. It's a beautiful estate. You thought Tony Montana's house was nice? Just imagine where they do the Rock Nation brunch at. They out there is heavenly, man. You would have thought they died and went to heaven. It's like the I ain't mad at your video. They all in there dressed up. Come on, Jada. You could have wore some. Bro, what you... Come on. Who the fuck? Who fitted Jada Kiss, man? This is blasphemous. Why they got Kiss out there looking like that? This suit looks stale. That's the Pee Wee Herman suit. And the hairline, bro. You came out there. You ain't put on no hat. No. Ain't even put on no lip chat. He got ashy knuckles. Come. <sighs> you at the Rock Nation brunch. He looking like he's showing up to a funeral or something. Like his daddy let him borrow his suit. Shit look moldy. It don't fit him right. Or no it don't. Look how big the collar is. It's either that collar too big or he ain't got no neck. Jay-Z, look at Jay-Z's face. He looked disgusted like, ugh, low money. Like, I smell quarters over here. He cheap. Come on, kids. He couldn't even make a straight face for the photo. You look dusty, Holmes. Why they be covering their wieners? I know it's supposed to be like a Masonic thing, but do that mean that they're taken? Like, not my goodies, the Sierra pose. Goodies, not my goodies. Like, I'm sorry, man, but these genitals are taken. They stand like that to let you know, like, nope, I'm keeping it tonight. Like, we both keeping it tonight. Jay-Z looking like you can't have none of this and you can't have none of that. Like, hold your stuff. Hold it. Because they think we going to give it up tonight, but uh-uh. That ain't what we doing. Jay the Kiss looking like I'm definitely not giving up mine. Jay to the mwah. I kiss you, you bitch ass nigga. <laughs> I bet the world won't miss you, you bitch ass nigga. Jada to the uh, mwah. he said that in the rap and it sounded like he had mad gloss on his lips when he was spitting them bars man now you know damn well Jay Z is not feeling no country as yo Gotti but for the money the manipulation just to see they don't want to see no other New York dudes on top of the game. That's what it was all about. Let's be real. When Jay-Z became the president of Def Jam, 
it was a whole bunch of New York rappers on the label. And by the time Jeezy and all them dudes came out on Def Jam, the ludicrous is going platinum and shit under Jay-Z's leadership. He made it to where all of his peers, his New York rivals, never, whatever, he cemented himself and made the black album and backed out. He faded the black. He painted the picture just the way he wanted it. He claimed the throne for himself. He made himself the greatest of all times. He surprised Biggie. He's so legendary. He shut the door on New York. Hold on, y'all. And Diddy was right there with him when he was closing the door. Like, it's me, you, Nas, and that's that. It's a wrap. That's it. That's what he did up there at Def Jam, man. He went up there. Method Man and Red Man couldn't even get in the building. DMX wound up having to do something else with itself. LL Cool J was complaining. Look how he did his peoples in the office, man. He got LeBron, who don't even rap, with Kanye West by his side. And he put them dude, they... Look at Memphis. Why he got bleak over there with a whole bunch of niggas from Philly. And they from Brooklyn. He put bleak in the junk pile. He felt like it was only right to tag them along since Rockefeller split up. They decided to go with Jay instead of Dame. But Jay didn't need them niggas. It was like his baggage that came along for the ride. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, I'm here now, but I got this baggage. But best believe I'm going to take care of that because this is what I'm focused on over here. Like, if y'all want to come, y'all could come. But, you know, hold, hold on. Y'all going to have to sit over sit over there. Oh, y'all want to come to the photo shoot? That's cool, but yeah, don't don't sit next to me. Now he don't want to sit next to Diddy. Y'all see how he do this shit, man? It's a crisis over the seatings at the Grammys, man. And seeing how Jay-Z do people that he really don't rock with like that. <clears throat> it might be him. Allegedly, that don't want to sit next to Diddy. This dude is a freaking legend. Don't broke down the East Coast, locked that shit under lock and key, gave Kanye West a platform. He from Chicago. He ain't no threat. Kanye could never look Jay-Z in his eyes because he know that he was just put there to make beats and he overstepped his boundaries and then tried to outshine the master. People accused the Kardashians of having Kanye West going crazy, but I'm pretty sure when he was going at Jay-Z. That's when he really lost his mind, man. Now nobody want to sit next to Diddy. He going to be at the Grammys all by himself in the corner. They're not even going to wave at him. They might even make an entrance for him to come in and they're going to warn security, warn everybody he's coming, he's approaching. They're going to be acting so damn funny at the Grammys. He might as well not even go. They're going to be on their walk, walkie talkies, scatter boxes. Puffy's approaching the bathroom. Make sure Jay-Z is not in the vicinity. I did you have to use that bathroom over there? Not the one. No, 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 don't go there. No. It'd be like a countdown. Diddy about to run into Puff. I mean, Puff about to run into Jay-Z. I need to take my ass to sleep. Because of Cassie, the chick he was bringing to the red carpets. Matter of fact, this is what I wanted to show y'all. 
this is exactly what I wanted to show y'all, man. Because these Grammys, the way they be seated, they always be together. Jay Z like to look over his shoulder and puff right there, man. They chatting, he laughing, yapping all night. They can't stop. The jokes keep on coming. They friends and they buddies, man. That's what that's how they do. Like when I get there, I want to sit here. I want to have Puff right there because that's my man's in them. And I want to have my man sitting across the table from me. You know, we all some bosses. Ain't got no time to be around no dusties, man. He got the dude from um Aquaman sitting over there. What the fuck is that? Wait a minute. Is that Grandmaster Flash? Jay Z got his hands in his pockets like he ain't trying to have nothing missing. Why he put his hands in his pocket like that? Like I don't trust him. Like I could smell the crack on your breath, shorty. You don't think I know what them O's be smelling like? I ain't got nothing for you, man. I just came to say what's up, young blood. I just came to say what's up. You know, if it wasn't for me spending on records, you wouldn't have a damn career, you know? Did you know that? Yeah, I laid it down, man. All that hip hop and the rapping y'all be doing, we started that, you know. We didn't get paid like we were supposed to. And then the crack era, y'all know, they came like a storm. We didn't know it was, it was dope. We didn't know. Look, young blood, see, I'm still DJing, man, and I, I think you need to do, you need to pay your dues around here, sucker. Yeah, man, give me some money. Give me, man, I need to be rich like you. I need to be rich too. Hey, you, do you know what they did to me? Keeping my hands in my pocket, shorty. I know what the dope and the yo yo smell like, man. I know what you out here doing, shorty. Yo, shout out to um Grant. He probably don't even do that. Somebody gave him a buck fifty on across his neck. He might be shady now. Oh no, get him off. <laughs> get him off the screen, man. But this is what I want. This, this is the grand finale. The Taj Mahal of this video I'm giving y'all, man. Y'all got to understand what's going on here. You got Swiss Beats. With Alicia Keys. Hard in his back. Standing behind her, man. This is how we do it. Girls get in line. That's right. They back there wiggling their butts like one time, one time for my man, for my man. What a man, what a man. Swiss Beats got Alicia Keys on his on his back, part of his back. High yellow red bone, you know, you no. Know, little light skin thing, a queen, wifey type wifey. Y'all see how these brothers get down? Next up, you got Jay-Z with the queen, the king bee on his back. Destiny's child royalty. I'm dangerously in love with you. I never leave. Songs that make Diana Ross go crazy. Can you imagine what them old school R&B divas got to say about this new generation wasn't Anita Baker trying to beat Beyonce for singing her song that's my song and you don't sing it like me bitch you ain't, you ain't half my talent hold on Beyonce I, I'm, I know I'm doing that girly gossip and spilling tea but damn ah song I'm on some inner diva shit but who, who the lady that told Beyonce? She said, that's my song you singing. I forgot who it was. Y'all probably know in the comment section. But um, yeah, somebody cussed out Beyonce 
for singing their song. Cause they don't feel like even Trick Daddy was on the radio talking about how Beyonce can't sing. And nobody disagreed with Trick Daddy, except for a few Beyonce supporters. He said Beyonce can sing, but she can't sing. And he from the the dirty dirty. He knows something about some good singing, man. He was raised up in the Bible Belt. You could say what you want to say about Trick Daddy, but you know he got them Southern roots. He know about that blues. He know about all. Look, look at him. He know about all that shit. That gospel music. He was raised up on it, cooking collard greens to it. He a brother for real. He thought somebody could sing or if they could sing. He said Beyonce ain't hitting on shit, man. Beyonce fans leave terrible reviews for Trick Daddy's restaurant after he said she cuss them hating ass. Bi- Do y'all see this shit? This is ridiculous. Them beehive hoochies went up in there, ate his food. Licked their fingers to the nail and turned around and left a bad review because he said Beyonce can't sing. Don't yap that man greens all the way down on fucked up them candy yams and sopped up the gravy and the syrup with a biscuit. Licked all between your nails, sucking in your nails like they oysters. And then had the nerve to leave a bad review at this man's restaurant because he kept it a buck. What type of sorority shit is this on her? Um, that look creepy. That's some old occultist boule. It's boule, I tell you. It's an elitist organization of black overclass to undermine the underclass. That is crazy. Listen at this, y'all. We do a lot of uh, mind, you know, mind contributing about how we can make, you know, the world, the country, our cities, our homes better. They're going to never record that. But what I said was, I don't think Beyonce could sing. And that Beyonce is to R&B what Jay-Z is to the state of hip hop in New York at the time when Jay-Z was began considering himself as the king of hip hop, the king of the goat of our um, rap, which is my opinion. And opinions like buttholes, without them you'd be full of doodle. Trick kept it a buck, y'all. Kept it a buck. Beyonce's talent got elevated when she got involved with the hottest rapper in the game. I got the hottest chick in the game wearing my chain. Got me looking so crazy in love. The song wasn't even. Come on, man. People weren't losing their shit over that song. People tolerated it. It was tolerable. But when the last time you heard that jam come on the radio on the throwback day? When the last time you heard Dan 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 like, what the fuck you expect us to do to that? That's my husband over there. And that's my cousin. We ain't about to be up on for nobody. That'll create a division in the family. Beyonce's song came on and Sanaya started bouncing her butt in front of Craig. Ain't Craig married to Jessica? Yeah, that's her husband. She talking about, uh-oh, 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 uh
that ratchet shit gonna get somebody in trouble, man. That ain't no soul music. People can't wait to bury all that hip hop. People waiting for the day that it's all over with. It's booty. And it been that way for a long time. I think hip hop became trash when people started thinking that they was actually saying something intelligent. When people started looking at rap for answers about life, that's when the shit fell off. When people started choosing rappers to be role models, people looked up to Ice Cube as a a male figure. That's when the shit got corny. And unreal <laughs> and unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? But that's Negro here no there. It's a few things I want to wrap up before we get out of here. It's a few things we got to talk about because like I said, Diddy been the king of the city for a long ass time. Now, he's so done. I would have never thought I would see the day that Diddy would take a plunge like this. It's scary how they can do a brother for having a sexual appetite. Yeah, he he liked to get in. It's consensual. He ain't the only, he a mogul. There's women lined up. At least he was hanging on to Cassie. He could have been with anybody. He kept her on his arm. And she went, she was there for the ride. It probably wasn't a pretty ride, but what is? She made it out. She look, she got choices she got to make. She been making choices. It's all about choices that people make, man. That don't mean you got to destroy this man's whole legacy. People talking about Diddy had it coming. And you know what? To keep it real. It's a possibility that Diddy just had it coming. Cause he don't got away with plenty of shit over the years. I guess it's his time. And this is the way they gonna do it. Cause nothing else could stick. You had shine do a dime for Diddy. 10 years in jail. Hold on. Shine. A rapper named Shine couldn't even shine because he was buried alive for Diddy. And he came home on some uh, Belizean elitist shit. Like, guess what? I wasn't even from America to begin with. I'm really from Belize. Can you believe that? Yeah, I came to America. You know, I did the shit with the niggas, you know, rap, bus gun, you know, smoke. All, you know, I did all that shit. But the truth of the matter is I'm from Belize and my people, I'm proud of my people. I actually have a culture that I'm proud of. So if anything happened to me, I could just go home to Belize and I got my reputation. I'm a famous person. And now... I'm a senator, a governor. My father had money, you know, because we from Belize. We we are proud people. You know, I did the African-American thing for a bag, and it's all good, man. The shit really hit the fan for me, but at the end of the day, I'm Belizean. Well, thank God almighty. You got a rock to stand on, bro. But you sure blended in, and we thought you was Jamaican. We ain't know what the hell. We thought you was Biggie. We ain't. You pulled a fast one on the hip. Some Millie Manilli Vanilla Ice shit. And we ain't even know what the hell was going on, bro. He ain't even spit not one rap about the keys from Belize and the G's and the Wee's. Or nothing. We had no clue. Hold on. What the fuck? A Pensacola woman charged with battery after snatching her sister's wig off. 
hold on, wait a minute, man. So they ran out of potato salad and this heifer. A bitch, what you chewing on? A bitch, what you chewing on? That better not be my potato salad, oh. Oh shit, you got the last little bit. You got the last corner. Oh shit. Snatched her wig off her head. And she got my sue yo, I called the police. I'ma sue your ass. Do what you gotta do. Go on, do what you gotta do. Go on, do, do what you gotta do. I'ma sue your ass. The police came, put her old ass in cuffs. She ain't take a shower in days. <laughs> Got the whole jailhouse smelling like a dusty. Oh Down at the police station, rotten. Baby powder up. Oh, somebody put that old lady in the shower, man. Like, let me tell my story. I'm a poet. And ever since I was a little girl, I used to have visions. And they always thought something was wrong with me. But I said, mama, I'm special. I was writing poetry all my life as a little girl. And that's when I met Craig. That's when he, he, he became the love of my life. And I had his baby. And then I met Jerome. And Jerome was the love of him. I wrote a poem. And next thing you know, I had his baby. And then that's when Tony came into my life. And I I, I definitely had his baby. Oh I look, man, I was just coming to get some weed, man. I wasn't a shooter. That's how he looking. Man, I ain't shoot that nigga. I just came to get some weed, man. Y'all trip. You ain't even got my fingerprints, bro. I ain't do. I ain't do none of that. Like ODB, my father. Swear to God, ODB. That's my father. Swear to God, ODB. This man, when he getting there. No, wait, 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 wait. He got booty goon written all over him. As soon as you get in the shower, that's the nigga you need to look out for. I could see it in his aura. He will get real close up on you. He probably a barber. He line you up. He get real close. That's all he do is line niggas up. He need to just go back to his country, man. This American shit ain't working out for his ass. Like, you know what? I'm going back to Angola. Like, yeah, take your ass back to Angola. This nigga. Y'all know what I see? This dude probably was a nerd or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And no disrespect to her. Him. Habitual offender convicted without and sentenced to life without parole. What happened to him? Laquan Akeem Fluker. Nigga, last name Fluker. Well, how did he get like that? I'm starting to think they computer program these niggas. Something going on. Or well, they've been cloning niggas. We just ain't know it. How do how do the niggas get like this? They just be a nuisance. To society, man. Barbershop triple mur What hold up, what? Suspect indicted for barbershop trip at a barbershop? Ain't that yellow beezy? In Ohio, Douglas Shine has been indicted for the aggravated murder of three men at the Chalk Lines Barbers, the Chalk Lines Barbershop. So when they got there, they was already lined out in chalk. Another body at the Chalk Lines Barbershop. 
before the investigators get there, they don't already line their bodies with the chalk. And this ain't no disrespect to the rest in peace to them, man. But that's crazy. How you gonna get outlined in chalk at the Chalk Lines Barbershop? If that ain't a bar, I don't know what it is. If he get out of jail, he seriously need to make that a hook. I leave your ass outlined in chalk at the Chalk Lines Barbershop. <laughs> That's a bar. In Warrensville Heights on February 5th, Cuyahoga County prosecutor, the grand jury indicted Shine, who only 20 years old for killing William Gonzalez, Brandon White, and Walter Bearfield. Three other people were injured by Shine's gunfire. He went in there and let that thing. Rah! But what? He came out of there with a fucked up ass hairline. He came back looking like Edward Scissorhands or somebody or Chucky. He came back with a Vegeta hairline and went Super Saiyan on everybody in there, man. Said, Hame, Kame. He fucked that hair. He went in three different chairs. Like, can you fix that? Like, don't worry about it. Bring him over here. I'll let him, I'll fix it for him. He fucked it up even worse. He asked the next dude, hey man, do you think, like real talk, man, I got a birthday party. I got a wedding, I gotta go. I got shit I gotta do, bro. Do you think you can fix this? Cause these other niggas, these other two things, they playing with me. Now, if you can't fix it, don't touch it. Come on, man, I got you. I... They laugh. <laughs> they laughing behind his back, chuckling and shit. They just making it worse. He got up out that chair. He looked at that mirror. Kame, Kame. Oh, y'all want me to act the Dragon Ball Z nigga. Yeah, well, y'all want me to be one of them old Dragon Balls ass. Okay. He turned up the level nine, 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 man. Oh, that is horrible, man. Outlined in chalk at the chalk lines barbershop. Anybody could spit that bar and it, people be like, whoa. He, he convicted of six counts of aggravated murder, three counts of murder, three counts of attempted aggravated murder, 10 counts of felon, felonious assault, counts of having weapons under disability. He, he disabled, with a, he retarded, and he got weapons and shit. One count of attempted murder. He ain't never getting out of jail. So even if he think about getting parole, they'd be like, what about these, all these murders, nigga? Go back to your cell. Only 20 though. Like hell shit. It's over kid. Young guys, he disabled. He probably was on pills or something. His mama let him go out in the streets to get a haircut. He don't know how to socialize with brothers. I got a gun. I, I, I shoot every last. The fuck he got on his neck? He got the gates of heaven going. He got doves and shit. Probably a hip hop. You know he listened to some. Who y'all think he be listening to, man? Probably Lil Uzi Vert. He got the, the cross in his head. 21 Savage. That's who he let influence him, man. 21 Savage, kill shit, kill shit. Come on, bro. How in the hell? He got teardrops. We don't know if that's acne or teardrops. Like, I'm just a sad little nigga, bro. You know, I'm only 20, but my shit fucked up. I feel sad because the music, it puts you in the mood. My favorite song is Lil Yachty, Lil Pluto. I like that. It make me space out, you know, don't think about nothing. Go to another planet. 
I'm just a helpless little nigga, man. You know, I play 2K. I got a basketball. I, you know, I do shit. Go get lined up so I could go see these hoes. You know, go see these hoes. It got to be a better way, man. Somebody said he probably a young boy fan. Or he listened to Chief Keef or somebody. Bullshit. Got him. They don't screw. Chopped and screw his whole shit. He done. Um, Somebody said justice for Kim Porter. Yo, definitely justice for Kim Porter, man. He said, I'm only 20, but I'm going to catch a body today for no reason. That's hey, that's how they be feeling. They tired of playing that um Call of Duty. They tired of doing it on the simulator. They want to do it in real life. They take a plunge and do some old dumb shit because they've been influenced. And the influence is too powerful. Especially when you're going through puberty. Shit, I went through it. I'm pretty sure we all did, man. Who don't want to be cool? It's just some shit I wasn't willing to do to be cool. I've seen people risk it all. Go to jail. The police coming. The nigga not even running. He waiting for the cuffs. I've seen it. Niggas get down on their knees when they hear the sirens around the corner like this is my time. To go down. I want the whole hood to see this. They will remember my face and my name. And when they put me in my cell, people are going to be talking about what I done out on them streets. And when I go to court, I'm going to hold my head up high and take my time like a man. They be laid on their back fantasizing about that shit I'm gonna be a real nigga one day mama and they mama be in the jail hey, give me back my baby they be bringing up tuna sandwiches and shit it is what it is man and I think it do make a man out of brothers especially when you're around all the men all day I'm like damn They be in there, man, ain't no telling, man, it's the world's biggest secret when them dudes get out of there. But Diddy ain't about to go there. Diddy ain't on his way to jail. He paying people off. But it don't look like he on his way to the Grammys neither because don't nobody want to sit next to him. And I'm heartbroken. I'm so confused about this, man. I don't like it. Why is it wrong when a brother have sex with somebody? Can you imagine the stuff that's going on? Not just in the entertainment business, but anybody in a position of power. The manager at a regular warehouse. The, the lead manager at Subway. So-and-so get all the days she want off and she get to work all the hours she want to work. It happens. People abuse their power and do all types of stuff, man. It ain't right. But I've just been noticing a trend that it's always a powerful brother or somebody that we admire and love that get a public lynching. And the coldest part about it is People of color enjoy the public lynchings of these celebrities. And I'm like, damn, his legacy means a lot to us because we witnessed something that we ain't never seen before. Black folks being successful and ridiculous at the same time. That's something we never seen in world history, man. We've seen successful black folks for the longest. Madam C.J. Walker, they had elegance and class and education and they deserved it. I mean, we all deserve it, but they 
earned it in a respectable manner. Every rich black person we've ever known before hip hop has been a person of class. You ain't never seen a successful rich black person bragging about getting there illegally. Diddy was the one of the first times we ever seen ghetto fabulous be acceptable anywhere to represent all of us. The birth of ratchet behavior, man. And it ain't gonna stop. He can't stop. He won't stop. They trying to stop him, but he paying out all this money and stuff. But like I said, it's only one way he can get out of the black ball is if he find himself some religion, got to find it quick and he got to find it fast. Let me show y'all something. Okay. Y'all got to feel me on this. I said, man, whenever you going through something as a black male, your best bet is to find some religion. Russell Simmons is bulletproof right now. His brother decided to become a Catholic priest. This man decided to become a Buddhist. So if you go at him, you going at the whole Middle East. You going at the whole Asian atmosphere. You don't want that smoke. You going after India. He don't balance this shit out. He don't do hip hop. He ain't got a mic in his hand. He decided to do yoga. He's good. R R hey, he found himself some religion about his black ass and he going to be all right. And for the people listening, if you want to get yourself on the right track and you want to fit in and blend in in society, you might want to get your hands on some religion as well. However you want to do it, baby, but just be serious about it. Don't play no games with it. You got to get on board. You got a variety to choose from nowadays, but you got to find it and hold on to it and have faith in God because people will respect you for that. They're going to treat you like you a human being, especially if people know your spiritual path in life. It's really that simple. And it take for people to get older to realize that, but you young people, y'all could grip onto some shit too. And usually the young people that do grip onto something, they wind up being successful, man. You see them kids with them beads and shit all on their wrist. They got funny looking tattoos that look all symbolic and they don't find themselves some religion somewhere however it, they got it and they rocking with it and it's working miracles because they got a relationship with God you know what I'm saying the choice is yours Diddy is gonna have to find it the sooner the better he need to hop under that Muslim umbrella and do the nation of Islam and Get rid of the poke and he'll have a large, it's a bunch of people that pray to Mecca, brother. It's a, a better lane than what he been doing with these thought pockets, the young Miamis and shit. That ain't no damn religion, bro. He gonna have to figure it out. This brother love. That's the lane he been trying to go. But it ain't been working for him, man. He figure if he spread love, his own message, his own doctrine, he just don't want to take his ass to church. Hey, do you attend my church? No, brother love don't have to go to a church because all I do is spread love. His driver's license. You got Sean Love. He changed his name for real. Brother Love 
like buddy love if you don't cut this shit out and find yourself some real religion he figured love heals all wounds baby I'm all about love that ain't gonna cut it I decided to change my name again my new name is love aka brother love he don't went from puff daddy smoking up all the weed like smoky puff daddy roll a blunt puff it and pass it puff daddy it was raunchy it was wild that's some afro man shit that's how he started off he went from puff daddy and took it down to diddy p diddy after he got in that shooting with Jennifer Lopez, he had to change his image. This shit was bad. Puff Daddy got in the shootout with uh, Jennifer Lopez. He had to do something about that. So then he changed it to Diddy. And it was more kid friendly. It was it was cheesy. It was, it was nice. It was cuddly. It was sweet. It really took that Puff Daddy sting off of it. It took the, it gave it a different flavor and made him acceptable. And now he was hoping his brother love was sweeten the deal for the rest of his career. But this shit making him look like more of a freak than Cassie even said. Brother love. Do he love the brothers? Everybody gets some love. So he's just freaking down everybody, man. It's a big old freak show. Squeezing cheeks and, and kissing. Whatever you want. It's love, baby. Was this an attempt to be super zesty? Or was he really about that love? Or what? Whatever it was, he need to find something else. He need to go hard in the church. Get with Kirk Franklin. Make a gospel album. And you will be protected by the blood. Let this man get merry, merry. Dun to the dun to the dun to the dun to the Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He could make a whole, a whole gospel album, man. Kirk Franklin get Mary J. Blige to sing some he better hold on to it find it and grip it and go legit bro they will leave you alone and that's for anybody you gotta have a stronger relationship you put too much trust and faith in the people man you gotta find a relationship with God and keep it there Hey, man, hopefully, you know, this information helps somebody. I appreciate y'all so much. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. For all the people that hit that like button and that notification and subscribe to the channel. I got so much love for y'all, man. And before I go, I want to show some love to the comment section because I know it's late at night and y'all ready to go to sleep. So we about to get out of here in a second. But before we do... What we got going on over in this chat? Let me see what's going on with my peoples, man. We got L'Oreal Crema. The pink gypsy tees with them old t-shirts on, man. Go to her Instagram, nothing but tie-dye t-shirts, man. She a gypsy or whatever. Sean Pimpin, what it do, bro? So real TV. Woman Teach and Thrive said, love you. I love you more, ma. Many Visions, Lindell Jones. Taylor made on her cycle with blood drops in the building, man. Sis Yah, but yeah, Israel. I think she a Hebrew Israelite. Somebody passed me the carrot juice. So glad to have you here, sister. 12. Did I mention y'all already, man? 
feel like I'm saying the same people. Oh, it's only two people leaving comments and I keep giving y'all shout outs. What the hell, man? David OB Jr. And Dada Moff is in the building. Call of Duty OG. He been playing it ever since it came out. Still playing that shit. Nifty Collectibles said, I live in Chicago. It's dangerous than a motherfucker. I need to move. No, you need to stay in Chicago. You was built for it, man. God put you there for a reason. And you need to hold it down, man. Every time I come across a person from Chicago, I just really don't want to talk. It's some good people in Chicago. Don't get it twisted, but uh, yeah. It's some good food up in Chicago too. But besides that, man, I ain't trying to kick it. Diddy, your friends ain't shit, bro. They don't want to sit next to you no more. Don't go to the Grammys. Just don't go. It'll make everybody more comfortable. They don't have to worry about the seating arrangements and shit because they're going to ask you not to come regardless. You might as well sit this on out. It's going to be a dark phase in your career because you need those people in order to stay relevant. But they are blocking every lane. They don't cut off the liquor money. They don't cut off the music. He, he don't gave the people back they publishing because they don't drained every penny he ain't got no money in that no more the music is all the catalogs is gone the music is gone he gave them back their catalogs like it's worthless y'all could have this is <laughs> wow they threw this man off of a cliff now don't don't nobody want to sit next to him. Man. Somebody said young Miami gone. He ain't got his girl no more. His kids, they want and they needing and they finally seeing what it's like to struggle. They got to be killing him, man. He probably up at night sweating. How the fuck am I going to pay for all this shit? He got all that stuff and really can't afford it no more. Them checks stopped coming in. He probably downsizing. He don't sold his mansion. He looking for an apartment. How low is it going to go? Is he going to be a beach bum? He going to wind up living in Flavor Flav's basement. Yo, cut that noise out down there, G. Man, turn that shit off. My kids are here, man. <laughs> Flavor Flav gonna be snapping on them. Hey man, cut these lights out up here. I'll pay the bills here, man. The black boy living with a black ass nigga. <laughs> I hope it don't get that bad, bro. Diddy don't deserve that. Hopefully, somebody get him a bag and let him go to Cuba with Tupac. They going to be out there fighting like cats and dogs on the beach. Did he get to Cuba? He see a roster walking up real fast. Now who the fuck is that? He snatched them dreads back. It be Tupac Shakur. Hey, what's up, bitch ass nigga? <laughs> like coconuts till I die. He beat the shit out of Diddy with a coconut. <laughs> His first day in Cuba, he get beat down with a coconut by Tupac. He built him a raft trying to get back to America. Gotta go back. I'm gonna die out here, man. Nigga Pac run shit out here, man. Everywhere I go, they bad boy killers. Who knows, man? I don't know. Y'all gonna have to let me know. And I appreciate y'all so much for watching every when what the hell y'all doing up so late anyway? <laughs> Man, we about to get some sleep and thank y'all so much. Hit them likes and hit them notification buttons. I'm gonna holla at y'all tomorrow too. <laughs>
And for the people that hit that cash app, I really do appreciate y'all, man. And for you ladies out there watching, and for my bros, I got love for y'all, man. You know, I got love for my, my bros out there, you know. Not like that. But y'all, you know, it is what it is. But for the ladies out there, man, it's all about y'all. L'Oreal Kramer, um, 12, and all the people watching. I got so much love for y'all, man. And just in case you ain't know, I risk my motherfucking life. I, 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 I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I risk my life to give you documentations, girl. I Sean got the jocks. I'm keeping it funky like some 